we got a red dot here. Hey, it's Sergeant First Class Todd Fitzwater with the Cleveland Medical Recruiting Station, and I'm joined by my OIC, First Lieutenant Greg Tarman, and we're very fortunate, both Lieutenant Tarman and I, to have Second Lieutenant Thank you, Kim, joining us today. Second Lieutenant Kim is a dental HPSP recipient, and we're going to go ahead and get right into it. Lieutenant Kim, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me, Sergeant. Hey, it's great to see you, and it's always good to see you and talk to you. Always learn something new when we have these conversations with you and all that. So what we're going to do today is we're going to talk a little dental HPSP, if that's okay. And uh, But first, before we even get there, give me a little bit about your background. Where are you from? Um, how did we get to this point? And we'll go from there. All right. Uh, just a little bit about my background. Um, my family immigrated to, uh, from the Republic of Korea to the United States back in 2004. Um, we have lived in the great state of Ohio since then, and I became naturalized along with my mother and my brother around the start of my junior year of high school back in uh, 2014. Um, yeah, and then I went to school, I went to college at the University of Toledo um, under the 3 plus 4 uh, dental program, in which I attend uh, Toledo for three years and then transition over to Case Western Reserve University School of Dental Medicine for the next four. So let me ask you a question. In, in that three by four, for those that don't know, what actually is that? So three years at the University of Toledo and then four years in dental school at the Case Western Reserve School of uh, Dental Medicine. Now, that is something that you that's a partnership between the two universities, correct? OK. Yes. So how did that come about for you? How did you, how did that that whole process of three by four uh, present itself to you? Well, I, I got really lucky, actually. Um, Initially, I didn't know that such a program existed until a uh, family friend of ours from church uh, tapped me and said, hey, you know, you should apply to the program that I'm in. I'm currently at the University of Toledo, and it's a three plus four program for the School of Dental Medicine. And yeah, and so I applied. Um, I talked about, you know, my background, my uh, all, all that stuff from high school. And yeah, and so... I had to go through like a lengthy interview process for that, uh, send in my SAT, ACT, GPA. But basically, they told me that as long as I did not mess up um, in Toledo, didn't have a grade that was below a B, and um, I stayed on top of everything and got a certain score on the DAT, I had a guaranteed spot coming into uh, dental school. So a guaranteed spot, that's pretty cool. So uh, with that guaranteed spot, were those accelerated classes for your undergraduate degree then? Yes. Um, they actually gave you the option of either graduating, if you work really hard, then you could graduate in three, or you could count the first year of dental school as your senior year of college. Um, for me, uh, all of my upperclassmen or that have been in this program told me that it is beneficial for me to finish my degree coming into dental school because a lot of the first year dental science curriculum are the stuff that you learn the senior year of undergrad. So I decided to just crank out the hours, put in a few extra credit here and there and graduate in three. So that's really interesting that three by four program. And I hope that people, you know, after hearing your story, Lieutenant Kim would know that that's a, that's a potential opportunity for them out there, especially for those that are looking to go to dental school. So we already know that we're going to dental school. Um, and we know that we're going to Case Western, which was uh, which is a great top tier dental school in the country. Um, let me ask you this: How did HPSB? How did how did that come about for you? And what was that initial recruiting process? What did that look like? So a little bit about the background into HPSP. Um, I first heard of HPSP when I was in high school. Um, back then. I was very much into the military because of my immigrant background. I've always felt this need to give back to the community that has taken care of me and my family. Um, and so in high school, I knew that at some point in my life, I wanted to go the military route. And so I was doing this program called Sea Cadets and one of our adult mentors there uh, worked at the VA and he told me about the HPSP program and told me that I should look into it once I start my process into dental school. So while I was in undergrad, I had a family friend who was 
a former army dent dentist. He came up to me and told me about the HPSP program and how he took part in it. And he, he told me that he didn't have any debt coming out of dental school. And this was back, I believe, in the 90s. And he told me that since then, all the benefits have only gone up and that I would really benefit by joining this program. And so that coupled with my prior enthusiasm for the military kind of just made sense. It made a lot of sense for me to go into Army HPSP. So you and I had that conversation. So we, we got in touch and then we first met. Talk to me about the first interaction you and I have had. You and I had. Okay. Um, so we met at a Starbucks for our preliminary uh, conversation. Um, we got to have a lot more casual conversation because I already knew about HPS becoming in. Um, I had a few questions for you about just, just to clarify, just to make sure that I knew the program inside out. Um, and after that, we just, uh, we just had like a very casual conversation. Um, I told you about my family background. Um, so I guess maybe I should go a little bit into that. Um, unfortunately, my mother was diagnosed with uh, breast cancer around my high school, uh, the freshman year of my high school year. Um, and it went into remission until the last year of my college. So my third year at the University of Toledo, um, my mother's cancer came back, it recurred. And this time I knew, thanks to my big and my fraternity, who was a med student and all the people around me, like I knew that this time was going to be terminal. And for my mother, um, her biggest fear, even though she was fighting this terminal disease, was making sure that my older brother and I were, were solid, to make sure that we were able to leave the nest and that she could die and be at ease. Because unfortunately for me uh, and my family, my father was never around too much. And so she wanted to make sure that we had the stability when she passed away. Um, and so coming to you to talk about HPSP, it not only guaranteed that I could pay for my dental school, it, all, it was able to relieve my mother and helped her uh, pass when uh, I got the scholarship and she knew that I was going to be okay. I was going to get paid. I was going to eat. I was going to be sheltered. I was going to be okay. Well, that's an interesting point. Like you said, you had, number one, you had the support around you. Mom wanted to make sure that you were going to be taken care of. So what's really interesting about our initial conversation, and you shared those details with me um, about mom and the family and all that, but you had done your research because you had a mentor out there uh, in the real world. And I thought, you know, our first sergeant, first sergeant, uh, Wayne, always says, find a mentor. And that's what we do in the Army. We find ourselves mentors that will take care of us and point us in the right direction and all that. And that's critical in, in anything we do in life, especially when it comes to uh, military, uh, you know, something along these lines. Um, but that's one thing that we want to do. You'll always see us in uniform when we sit down initially with you. Uh, I, I know initially you were a little caught off guard by that, but it was a casual conversation. But within, the, within that conversation, we would really get down to brass tacks based upon the research you had done. So when myself and... Uh, Lieutenant Tarman come into a situation and into an interview. It's nice to have somebody that has done that background research because it allows for a better conversation, a more professional conversation that is directed towards you and what you want to accomplish. Lieutenant Tarman? Hey, Sergeant Fitzwater, Lieutenant Kim. Good seeing you guys. Um, so we're talking about uh, knowing the details and then being able to tailor uh, HPSP towards helping you out with your professional goals. So with HPSP, you uh, are able to go to any accredited university uh, and it's fully funded. So the Army's paying 100% of the tuition. You receive a monthly stipend of approximately $2,400 and then you get a $20,000 bonus on top of all that. So you're completely supported by the Army. What has this afforded you uh, in terms of pursuing your professional career? Um, I would say that it has afforded me freedom and a peace of mind. Um, anytime that we are applying for, to, we're paying tuition or anytime we have to buy the new expensive piece of equipment for lab, um, a lot of my friends panic because they have to think about the loans that they have to take out. They have to think about how am I going to pay this off in the next 10, 15 years. Um, however, for me, I never had to worry about that because I have a stipend and 
they actually, the army reimburses you for all of your textbooks and equipment. Um, there is a piece of dental, a uh, piece of equipment in the dental field called a loop. And they're basically these specialized glasses that help you uh, basically magnify the caries and all the bad things that go around in the mouth. And it's expensive because they have to make sure that they align perfectly. They have to measure how far away your eyes are to um, the patient's mouth and how wide your eyes are from each other. And it's very personalized. So it will, on average, like run you around $1,500 to $2,000. Um, and for me, even if I had taken loans, I wouldn't have had just that $1,500, $2,000 just lying around for me to just pause at the uh, issue. However, for the Army, they, they just wrote me a check and told me, it's like, here you go. Um, get, get the loops that you need. Um, however, on top of just the financial security, which, it, you know, with the whole pandemic situation and the quarantine uh, has been very nice, um, I was very surprised by the support network that was there for HPSP students when we first came into, when I first came into dental school. Um, I'm currently a part of a club called the Tau Sigma Military Dental Club. And it is basically a student organization. It's basically like an officer's club um, for all the dental students who are in the military and are going into the military. So you have people from all branches, Army, Navy, Air Force, and you have upperclassmen who are doing training during the summer or are doing externships at military hospitals that will just tell you all about their experience. And it's been very helpful. Like you have this solid squad to just hang out with a cohort to turn to. And on top of that, many of your faculty, your professors and your preceptors, uh, a lot of them, I, I was very shocked. A lot of them were army dentists, just straight up. Um, and so during lab, uh, a prof a one of our professors would just come by and like tell me their war stories or would offer to mentor you. And I've accepted, I've taken up their offer on many times and you just get connected and you have the opportunity to network with a lot of people that you otherwise wouldn't have as just a regular student going to dental school. Yeah, so what's really interesting, what, what I got out of that was the fact that, you know, you're involved in the learning community of like-minded individuals that mutually support one another within, within that particular uh, society that you belong to. And if memory serves, weren't you recently named uh, the executive of that or president of that society? Yes, uh, I've, I've been elected as the president of the uh, club, and I'm very excited to reach out and expand this club as much as possible. Yeah, so you know what, what's happened to you and you got to see in your first year of dental school that learning community that we just talked about. So that's going to be very beneficial to you and then you get to take that to the underclassmen moving forward. So that that's pretty cool. Sir? Yeah, so uh, I understand you're getting prepared to go to your direct commissioning course in June. Um, so that's going to be another opportunity for you to expand your network and meet a bunch of other people who are those like-minded individuals. But uh, what are you doing to prepare yourself for DCC? So uh, before we went into lockdown and quarantine, um, I started running miles, uh, doing push-ups, sit-ups. I mean, I still do push-ups and sit-ups like here at home. Um, but mo most importantly, it's getting mentally ready. You know, you listen to the upperclassmen, you talk to your military mentors, um, and they'll tell you, you know, their stories and, it's, it's actually, I feel like it's very important for you to reach out and talk to those mentors um, because they'll give you advice from, you know, what kind of boots to wear, if you should double, double layer your socks or how to wear your uniform. Um, I asked one of our professors who was a Army oral surgeon, actually Colonel Dundon, he's still in the Army Reserve. And actually um, recently his unit was asked to help FEMA and, you know, I'm praying for them every day. Um, they, like, he, he told me that I should go to Pittsburgh, which is like a two-hour drive to get fitted for my uniform. And really, like, uh, all the packing, the preparation, the physical training, it, the fact that other people reached out helped me and I was able to reach out and ask other people for assistance really helped a lot. And I'm really excited, especially being cooped up in my apartment uh, for the past few weeks. I'm excited to go to Oklahoma, you know, enjoy the sun, you know, uh, do some PT. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, what's really interesting, too, is that we have such a network in, in, 
in uh, the Cleveland Medical Recruiting Station that we can put you in touch with, Colonel Dundon. Uh, Colonel Dundon, as a matter of fact, uh, Dr. or Captain Homan, who is a practicing general dentist, um, or gen general dentistry, uh, he knew him and he, he was in the same situation, had Colonel Dundon and it made that transition for him. Uh, and he transitioned, he didn't do HPSB. So he was a year and a half out of, of school, graduated, practicing. Uh, but when he heard the name Colonel Dundon, because he had so much respect for the man, uh, it made that transition for him from civilian over to the Army Reserve. Uh, it made it that much easier. But that's the cool thing here that we offer is the fact that we have that large network where we could go ahead. Not only are we a resource, but we could put you in touch with subject matter experts. And those individuals can help get you situated for what's coming up. And that is your training and all that. And that's a good position to be in. You have your recruiting. You have your recruiters, and then you have the subject matter experts that you're working with on top of that learning community that you had spoke about earlier. Sir? No, that's exactly right. Um, I don't feel like you're ever totally going into a situation blind when you're in the Army because you do have that network all over the place. And I think that's a huge concern that you uh, see a lot of people have with joining the military is the fact that they think they're going to have to move around a lot. They're going to have to uproot and always have to meet new people. But I personally haven't found that to be the case. Uh, you don't necessarily need to reinvent yourself every time you move duty stations because chances are you already know somebody there. Uh, so that's just a good piece of information to take away, too. Uh, my next question for you is uh, why did you choose HPSP? What were your driving motivations behind doing HPSP uh, as opposed to another uh, program that the Army could offer you? So um, I don't have a singular reason. I, I've had a multitude of, of reasons that all factored in and kind of set me on this one path. One, again, going back to my immigrant roots, I need that I need to do something to give back to the country, to give back to my community. And again, like when I say the community, like a lot of people mistake that for, you know, um, just uh, it's, it's, it's hard to describe. It's well, when I talk, think about community, I think about my neighbors. I think about the people who took care of my mother when she was, she had cancer. I think about, you know, my friends and family who took me in um, while she was getting treatment um, and treated me as one of their own. Like I think of family, but not just blood related, but the neighbor, the whole, the friends, the uh, family friends who really take care of you. Um, and so I guess it's that aspect on top of the financial stability, again, with, the, with my familial situation, with my family situation, um, I needed to make sure that I was ready to leave the nest. I need to make sure that I knew I was gonna be able to eat in dental school. I, I needed to be able to like afford an apartment. I needed to do, do all of these things. And again, if I was just drowning in loans and as much as I love my school, it's $70,000 a semester, not, not a year, a semester. So that's what, 150,000 this year and maybe 120,000 next year, that, that's a lot of debt to rack up. Um, and so, that, so instead of worrying about loans and debt, when I'm at school, I'm just focused on school. I you know, worry about my patients, I worry about uh, what I'm doing in lab, I worry about what I'm doing in class, and I don't have to worry about what's gonna happen to me 10, 15 years down the line. That's an interesting point. And you know, that's something that we've heard before. And as a matter of fact, that's something that we talk about. And the reason we talk about it is because of, you know, the historical evidence we have from, from our, our past applicants, and that is stability. So you know what you're going to be doing. Like for someone that comes in, uh, whether it's dental or medical, uh, on the medical side, you know you have to go to medical school. You're going to do that anyways, right? Then you have your residency, okay? And then you go serve four years. So you know what you're doing for the next 12 years. Now, that sounds like a lot of time, but you already have to go through eight years anyways. So the other four years is you're getting paid. And oh, by the way, when you get into your residency on the medical side, you're a captain in the United States Army making between ninety-three dollars and $98,000 a year. You could have a lifestyle versus what the national average of what residents get paid at, at $50,000. So that creates a lot of flexibility. But I think the key thing that you said is the fact that it allows you to solely focus on your education and your patients, Lieutenant Kim. And that, that to me, you don't have to worry about racking up those debts. You don't have to worry about your living situation because you're getting that stipend of, of 2000 over $2,000 a month. 
So that pays your living wage or your housing. Um, I just think that's an incredible opportunity for a lot of people to create the stability, knowing where you're going so that you can focus truly on your education and your patients. Sir? No, that's exactly right, Tarn Fitzwater. And um, so, Lieutenant Kim, I know you're always a good resource and you're always wanting to give people advice and help others out. So uh, in closing, I just wanted to ask you, what would you tell someone who's considering uh, potentially doing the HPSP program? Uh, what sort of advice would you like to leave with them? I would say um, in terms of timing, if you have, even if you're only like 5% sure that you want to do it, I would say like start applying now. Um, this is something that I've been telling a lot of students coming into dental school. Unfortunately, they're a little bit too late to apply for the four-year HPSP, but they're still three-year HPSP and in some rare cases, two-year HPSP. And people forget for third-year medical dental students that you can still join the reserve afterwards. You can still apply after your education too, and they have great, benefit, uh, great benefits and incentives for doing that too. Um, the reason why I emphasize the time is that when you are offered a scholarship, you have the choice to take it or not. It's not, a, a meeting with the recruiter is not binding. Um, and it's much better to have that option to say yes or no versus, you know, say like in October, you're thinking to yourself, wow, I really, really want to do this. Wow, my textbooks cost a lot more than I thought it was going to be. And find out that our army boards like meet in November and you're already too late, you can't apply for it. Um, and on top of that, I would say uh, to go with the right intentions. Um, although the financial aspect is really, really like alluring, you know, it, it drags you in and it makes you want to do it. It's like, make sure that your heart is in the right place. Like, are you doing this because you want a quick, you know, a quick 500,000 and you want to get out? Or do you actually want to give back to your uh, country? You want to work with the people. You want to work with your unit. You want to work with the people next to you and serve the people who serve us. Um, and on top of that, it's, I, I'd say, do do what works best for you. Do what, uh, do what works uh, best for you. For me, I don't regret it. I love HPSP. Like I hang out with the people that do HPSP on top of my regular, regular cohort. Um, honestly, I, I love being surrounded by gung-ho, enthusiastic, motivated people. And I wouldn't have been able to do that if it weren't for the HPSP program. And that's a common thread, being around like-minded individuals. I think Captain Holman talked about that as well is that enthusiasm, the Army values, uh, loyalty, duty, respect, selfless service, integrity, and personal courage. The acronym for that is leadership. And that's the other thing that it's not just that you're going to dental school. You're also learning those executive leadership skills from the Colonel Dundons and then through your formal training that we put you through in the recommissioning course and then later on uh, basic officer leaders course. So you're learning that executive skill set as well, which is critically important. Um, let me ask you this, Lieutenant Tarman, if someone is interested in dental health profession scholarship program, what would be the step that they would want to take um, to start that conversation with the Cleveland Medical Recruiting Station? So you heard it from Lieutenant Kinnam himself too. Don't be afraid to come in, talk to any one of our recruiters. Every single one of us is extremely knowledgeable and we'll sit down and have that candid, casual conversation with you. Nothing's binding. We're not going to force you into it. We just want to make sure you have the information available. So uh, we're out of office right now, but you can send us an email or uh, call us on our line. I'll let Sergeant Fitzwater uh, let you know what that is, but we will answer and we'll give you the information that you need to make the most educated decision that you can so that you can pursue what you want to professionally. Absolutely. And I can tell you this, that as a recruiter and doing this for a very long time, sharing the Army story, sharing the Army programs and all that, I may not always have the answer that you're asking, but I will guarantee you one thing. I will not give you an answer, uh, an answer that I don't know. What we will do and what we do very well at the Cleveland Medical Recruiting Station is source the information, whether it's through doctrine or through our regulations or through a subject matter expert. We will get you the proper information for you to be able to make a decision. If you have any interest in coming in and being a part of the HPSP program or anything Army Medicine, please contact us at 216-402-6352. And you too can start the conversation much like we did with Lieutenant Kim 
and see what may be available to you. Lieutenant Kim, thank you very much for your time. Really appreciate it. And uh, there was one special thing that you did for me. And that's something that I get to take with me as I start transitioning in my retirement. And, and that is the first salute. And real quick before we end, can you tell me what that was, what that first salute was like and, and what you gave to me? Of course. Um, the first salute is a very symbolic ceremony. Um, it's after you become formally commissioned and there's actually two forms of commissioning. One is like the paperwork that you sign saying that, you know, you, you will commission into the military. And there is a public ceremony where you gather your friends, your family, and it's kind of like a presentation in front of the public uh, to show that you are now a commissioned officer. Um, unfortunately, my mother passed away before that, um, so she wasn't able to come. However, I was able to invite, again, my friends, my, you know, my family, and we were able to do it at our dental school. Um, and so Sergeant Fitzwater came over. He's the one who recruited me. And after my ceremony, after I gave my oath of office, uh, he rendered me my first salute, which is to, which is to sim symbolically recognize that I am now an officer. Um, and in the army, when someone salutes you, you salute back. Um, and after that, I was able to present him with the silver dollar, which is the recognition historically is the recognition that you, a pre, you will take care of your troops. You'll take care of the people that you command. Uh, and this is like a tradition that goes all the way back to the revolution. And a silver do dollar used to be a third of a officer's like pay, a, a lieutenant's uh, pay. And so by rendering the silver dollar to the first man who salutes you or first woman to salute you is showing that you now have accepted that responsibility and you are appreciative of the respect that is given to you and that you will make sure that you take care of your men uh, and men and women as you would yourself. And I can tell you this, Lieutenant Kim, it was a pleasure to be able to work with you, uh, to set you up for success. And that day when you, uh, it was a great honor to receive that first salute uh, to be a part of that. And I can tell you that that silver dollar will always be prominently displayed anywhere I go for, uh, outside the Army. Uh, and I'll carry that with me the rest of my life. So I really appreciate that. And uh, in closing, again, if anyone has any questions about dental HPSB or MedCore HPSB, please contact us at 216-402-6352 at the Cleveland Medical Recruiting Station. And we look forward to the conversation we're going to have with you. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Lieutenant Tarman, thank you for your time. Lieutenant Kim, thank you. And we wish you all the best and know that we're always a resource for you. Thank you for having me, Sergeant. Thank you.